Okay, good morning. Thank you, all you early risers. Welcome to the beginning of the 2017 Privacy Enhancing Technology Symposium. On behalf of the um, program chairs and the general chair, Rachel, Claudia, Nick, and myself, thank you for making the track here. And so Rachel, um, Nick, and I will be doing the intro, and Claudia will be doing the closing ceremony. And to start out with, let me just give you some quick statistics on the attendees. So we have um, on the lower bound 146 attendees, including four um, that are attending via the webinar on YouTube. And this is probably a lower bound. I assume that there were some people, stragglers, that just registered this morning. And the breakdown of where the attendees come from is 66% from North America. That makes sense since the conference is in North America. Um, we have about 26% from Europe that made the trek across the pond. And we have some fairly distant travelers. We have one attendee from Australia, one from New Zealand, and then we have one a little bit closer from um, South America. And so thank you very much to the Australian and New, Zeal New Zealand attendees. <laughs> It's a very long flight. Um, OK, so as you know, PETS has a journal style of reviewing and submission. And so here's some quick statistics on submissions and acceptance rates for 2017. And so in total, we had 231 submissions. Um, submissions are kind of hard to count when you have a journal style reviewing process. So um, of these, we had. 52 accepted papers, um, including 33 major revisions, or sorry, right, of the submissions, right, um, not all of them were unique, so we had 180 actual unique submissions, and we had the 30 major revisions and the 32 that were resubmitted after a reject and resubmit option. And so um, acceptance rates also get tricky to count when you have a journal style model. And the raw overall accept rate was 22.5% overall. However, um, right, of the unique submissions, within a year, 29% of these ultimately were accepted. And so um, about 76% of the major revisions were ultimately accepted. This is fairly good. This means that when someone is given a major revision, it's likely that their paper will be accepted in a previous round, but it's not guaranteed that it will be accepted in a previous round. And um, of the major subsequent, re subsequent excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, early in the morning, um, of the people that um, authors that chose to resubmit, reject and resubmit, 23.8% of these were accepted in a subsequent round. And um, of the new submissions, we accepted. 13.3% of these. And so some quick fancy graphics to represent this. And so this is um, across two years of the POPETS selection process. And so the, um, the blue ones are rejects or rejects and resubmits. The red ones are resubmissions with major revisions. And the um, yellow ones are accepts or accept with shepherding. And so as you can see, um, the first round of the issue is always has the fewest number of submissions. And then submissions kind of ramp up as um, the rounds progress. And the largest one is always what was traditionally the original deadlines when we had a normal conference reviewing style. Um, it's evening out a little bit for this second year, 2017, but there's still definitely a ramp up. And also, as you can see, submissions are growing. So that's good. That means that um, more people are choosing to submit to PETS, hopefully because of our journal submission model. And the other thing we can look at is the acceptance percentages. And so the blue ones are straight rejects. The red ones are reject and resubmits, which we didn't add until the um, last three rounds of 2017. The yellow ones are um, major revisions. The green ones are shepherding. And the purple ones are stay accepts. And so as you can see at the beginning um, of 2016, 
for the first three rounds, there was a um, significant number of major revisions, and the um, previous PC chairs and Claudia noticed this, and they kind of um, tried to decrease the number of major revisions that were given and um, push some papers perhaps to shepherding when that was more appropriate. <laughs> or, or downwards if they felt that um, major revisions might not result in acceptance. And so um, this obviously cut down on the number of major revisions given. And then for those last three rounds of 2017, we added this decision of reject and resubmit. And um, our thinking of this was that um, reviewers tend to be hesitant to give straight rejects. And so we wanted an option for the reviewers where if they thought that the paper had some promise, but they couldn't see a clear path to getting accepted, they could give it this reject and resubmit. So a more encouraging kind of reject where the paper had some promise and could potentially um, be approved to be acceptable at some point. And so as you can see, a lot of reviewers have been opting for that decision on papers. And in fact, a lot of the um, reject and resubmit papers that are resubmitted um, do get accepted at about the same rate as other papers. The other thing that we can look at are the statistics of accepted papers. So the number of authors, median is three, average is 3.8. So um, decent number of authors per paper, number of institutions, median is one, average is two. So we're seeing more collaboration across institutional boundaries. Um, more statistics on accepted papers in terms of authors. So 77% of the accepted papers had only academic authors. 17% um, of them were academic industry collaborations, 3% were government, and 3% were academic government collaborations. Locations of um, authors for accepted papers, it's um, roughly equal between Europe and North America, Asia at about 6%, and then we had some um, collaboration between Europe and North America, 11%, and then we had one that was a collaboration between um, North America, Middle Eastern, and European. And um, some tips to get papers accepted. So we did a little bit of digging in our um, accepted papers, and we find that um, collaboration is sometimes key. So we found that when a paper had both academic and industry authors on the paper, it had about a 50% accept chance. This was much higher than normal. Um, however, there are some pitfalls. So um, papers that only had industry authors had about a 10% accept rate. <laughs> so good, I guess, to add at least one academic collaborator. And then we also found, um, Rachel found an interesting statistic of another potential path to have your paper accepted at PETS. So apparently, um, you can try a submission timing attack to get a lucky number. And so submission 18 was accepted in all four rounds of 2017. No guarantees that this will hold, but for this year, this was the case. And so with that, I will hand it over to Rachel. All right. um, how do I do this? Hi, all. You can hear me? OK. So about the program. <laughs> so today, we're starting um, at, with talks at 9 AM. And Susan will be chairing uh, our sort of human factors, privacy attitudes, app permissions, and social engineering session. Following that, we're going to have a keynote address um, from Jonathan Albright, who's going to be talking about um, emotional targeting, responsive news delivery, and the shaping of social discourse. Uh, so very sort of topical sort of topic. Um, after lunch, we're going to have uh, the tour session chaired by uh, Kelly Kane. Um, if if he, uh, session chairs who are here, maybe we can have people raise their hands or, or when they come up so the authors can find you. So Susan, yeah. And um, Kelly, are you here? Yeah. OK. And um, uh, tagging, wiretapping, and cryptocurrencies, chaired by Arvind, who may or may not be here yet. Um, and then in the evening, we're going to have a pets banquet um, at the Humphrey Center. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, tomorrow, 
Uh, we will start with some discussion of censorship and fingerprinting, chaired by George Denasis over there. Um, and then we're going to have a town hall. So all this stuff we've been talking about in terms of our model and peer review and the conference and how it's going, it's really important for us to have feedback from you know, the authors and the reviewers and the community at large and the people that attend the conference on what's working and what isn't working. We take this stuff really seriously. Uh, so please come and um, throw tomatoes at us or whatever is appropriate. Um, and after lunch, we're going to have a location privacy session uh, chaired by Yoshi Kono, who may or may not be here. And, um, identity and then identity management and data privacy chaired by Stephen Murdoch. It's over there. Uh, unless you're on the pet board, you have the evening on your own that evening um, to go see some of Minneapolis. Uh, on Thursday, uh, we are, you know, as we mentioned, we have 52 papers. Um, because of this, by the way, the talks are, um, you know, relatively short, so try to stay on time. And we do have um, a double track day. So in this, um, right next door, we're going to have the sort of crypto sessions um, with multi-party computation chaired by Costas, um, who's back there. Uh, the cryptographic protocols and attacks chaired by Peter, who's here. And the crypto and secure storage chaired by Pratik, who may not be here this, at this morning. OK. And in this room, we're going to have sort of a more applications-oriented track, anonymous communications chaired by Aaron Johnson, um, location tracking and mobile applications chaired by Eileen Kaliskan, um, and web privacy and device tracking chaired by Rob Jansen. So that is most of Thursday. But then we are going to come back together for a plenary session, rub session which is often one of the highlights of the conference, chaired by Roger Dingledine. If you have um, some sort of work in progress or an announcement or something that you want to give a short five minute talk about, you should co talk to Roger or send him mail and get on the schedule for the rump session. Uh, after that, we're going to have an award ceremony and closing remarks, where we'll give out the Casper uh, Bonin Privacy Enhancing Technologies Award and the Andreas Fitzman uh, Memorial St uh, student Best Student Paper Award. Um, following that, we'll have a, a reception in the evening. Uh, on Friday, we're going to have um, an excellent program uh, put together by the Hot Pets Chairs, and they'll tell you all about that. It's also on the website. Um, and on Saturday, we'll have a 10 a.m. flight, uh, 10 a.m. hike to Minnehaha. <laughs> Excuse me, Minnehaha Falls. So. Um, yeah, so that is the program in a very quick glance. Um, the program, by the way, is in your packets, but it's also online on PetSymposium.org. What you'll also find online and new for this year is uh, sort of talk ratings. So um, we, we ask you to provide ratings and, and comments for the talks that you see. Uh, the ratings will be used uh, to select uh, presentations for what we're going to have as call as an honor roll, which is maybe a nice CV line for the for the papers that that or the, the authors that that receive this. Um, but it's also going to be useful. We have these videos online to help people select sort of some of the best videos who may not have been able to attend the conference to watch. Um, we're hoping to have somewhere in that 25 percent to 33 percent range of, of talks selected for the, for the honor roll. Um, there, so if you, if you click on it, if you go to PetSymposium.org, 2017 program, or just go to PetSymposium.org and click on the program, um, by each talk, you'll see a link that says, rate this talk. And there will be a nice, insecure Google form. We're counting on the, uh, the relative non-maliciousness of this community. Um, so, and you can, you can rate a talk in a sort of your basic, you know, one to five scale. And there's also an area for comments. The comments are, are not so much for the ratings and the awards, but to provide constructive feedback to the, to the authors of the talk. So um, please uh, consider uh, rating the talks you see and giving feedback uh, so that we can, you know, highlight and reward some of the people that put tons of effort into making a really excellent presentation. 
with that, I'd like to acknowledge a number of people that have put a ton of work into this event. Um, our general chair, Nick Hopper, um, and his, the team S, uh, CSNE support staff, in particular, Dania Sidhu and Faith Goner. Um, the program committee that has worked hard over and the editorial board to select all of the papers, um, and particularly the external reviewers as well. I will speak more about that on the next slide. Um, <clears throat> here at PETS, we also do proof reviews uh, for our crypto papers, which is something that even crypto and EuroCrypt didn't know, don't do. If you, most crypto papers actually don't have or have anyone that peer reviews the proof, but for accepted crypto papers, we do do that. Uh, so thank you to our proof reviewer. We had one case in this uh, case, and our session chairs who have uh, graciously stepped up in the last minute to, to chair the sessions. Um, our publicity chairs, Kat Hanna and Tariq, uh, who have been uh, tweeting and getting the word out about pets. Our publications chair, Mark Juarez, that makes sure that everything is nicely formatted. Our video chair, Aaron Johnson, that has really helped. Uh, we have a, lot of, a number of people that couldn't attend um, that will be able to see uh, recorded presentations as well as the live stream. Um, our web chair is Ian Goldberg, who manages the submission site, and Kat Hanna, that manages the website, petsymposium.org. Um, our stipend chairs, which have brought many of you to the conference, and um, our, our rump session chair, Roger. Okay. Join us, and together we will review privacy papers. So we, um, we like to include junior researchers in a much larger percentage of the community in our peer review process, both review and discussion. So many, some of you guys have done external reviews for pets. Uh, please raise your hand if, you're, if, you've, if you've done that. So you may be looking around and being like, what are these people doing that I'm not? It's not the case that, like in many cases, their advisor just delegated the paper to them and then they, they, didn't, they didn't participate in the process afterwards. We consider external reviewers to be sort of first-class citizens in the peer review process. It's a peer review process. We have many student authors. Student reviewers are also our peers. We try and make sure that roughly Roughly one in four of the reviewers is uh, an external reviewer. Um, and in particular, we don't want um, people to nominate, to, to delegate reviews in the, in the, in the typical sub-reviewer process because the discussion period is so important to our review process. And it's, and, and, and it, it's a wonderful opportunity for learning, but it's also an opportunity to make our papers better and to create better reviews. So, you can nominate yourself. Um, there's a Google form there, but it's always hard to type up Google forms. Uh, but you can actually get that if you get to it if you if you go to petsymposium.org and you click on the about reviews. There's a link to this Google form, and you can nominate either yourself or your colleagues or your students um, to participate in this process. And we will we we painstakingly try and match you to papers that are you know, in your area of expertise. Because we've noticed that many grad students um, may not have the breadth to sort of review lots of papers on the committee, but uh, on the, in, of the submissions, but they do have a lot of specific expertise that can help them to review, to review papers in their, in their area. So possibly better than many others, because they know those areas extremely well. So thanks. I also want to thank our sponsors, the, our organizer, the University of Minnesota, our preceding sponsors, which keeps us open access and, and yet have the conference affordable, Deep, DeepMind, um, Zcash, our platinum sponsors, our silver sponsors, Brave and Comcast, additional sponsor, Intel, um, and our, our stipend and webcast sponsors, the National Science Foundation and the Ford Foundation, uh, which have helped many of you attend. So with that, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Nick to say a couple words, and then we will uh, start the session. <laughs>